Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, in a previous video, we made something known as potassium nitrate, which is a rather strong oxidizer. Um, and potassium nitrate has several applications, however, it's rather expensive to make, as the potassium chloride we need is um, not nearly as cheap as what we can buy to make other products. It's like, you can buy 500 grams, but it costs like $15. Um, and it can be found as a no-salt substitute, but um, anyhow. So, in applications that don't necessarily need potassium nitrate, we can make something called sodium nitrate, which is much cheaper to make and works just as well. And my main use for it will be making uh, concentrated nitric acid, because um, I don't want to waste all my money on potassium nitrate. And um, ammonium nitrate, such as found in these cold packs, when used to make nitric acid, can decompose into ammonia gas and neutralize your acid, which is always a downside. Now, when I tried this before, it didn't happen, luckily. But um, it's much easier if you just have the sodium nitrate. And sodium nitrate can also um, have other uses, such as mixing with sugar and making smoke bomb type um, reactions. Anyhow, so the basic reaction that we're going to be carrying out today is by taking the ammonium nitrate, which is found inside these cold packs. And these are actually calcium ammonium nitrate cold packs. So there's also uh, calcium nitrate in these cold packs. Um, and it's mixed together, but that doesn't matter. So we're going to be reacting the nitrate with some sodium bicarbonate, which is this baking soda, which you can easily buy at any store. And this will form um, ammonium bicarbonate and sodium nitrate. And then I'll be showing you what to do with that after. Anyhow, so the first step to do is simply to open these cold packs and uh, take them out. So I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so we can now turn on a scale. If it will turn on, there we go. And simply take some scissors and chop open your cold pack. Now, it is important to look on the back and make sure it does contain calcium ammonium nitrate or ammonium nitrate or something of that matter. Let's take another one, and uh, this is the French side, but the English side, you can see that right here it says contains calcium ammonium nitrate and water. If it says urea or something, that will not work for this experiment. It must be calcium ammonium nitrate. Um, anyhow, and they're only instant cold packs. Now, you'll find a water pack inside, and we'll just put that to the side. But we have to weigh out all of the calcium ammonium nitrate in each individual cold pack. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be back uh, to see how much everything weighed in the end. Okay, so of all four of those cold packs, there was 375 grams of calcium ammonium nitrate here, which is uh, plenty. And one box of these cold packs costs about $4 at Walmart and can be found in the pharmacy section. And um, I each uh, box contains two cold packs, so I bought $8 worth of uh, calcium ammonium nitrate, and we're left with 375 grams. So now we must take a fair amount of water to dissolve it. We have to make sure that everything gets dissolved because we're going to filter the solution um, to get rid of all the anti-caking agent, which just stops it from clumping together. Um, so we're going to filter um, everything after fully dissolving it in water. So I'll tell you how much water I end up using, but we're just going to add the min minimum amount of water to make everything dissolve. Now there will be, of course, floating impurities in there due to the anti-caking agent, but you should have a rough estimate on when everything's dissolved. So uh, keep in mind, because this is uh, calcium ammonium nitrate and it's used in cold packs, upon the addition of water, it's going to get very, very cold. Um, so you'll just want to use a fair amount of stirring to make sure that everything dissolves, and it might take a while due to the cold temperatures. So I'll be back when I've uh, dissolved everything, and I'll tell you how much water I used. Okay, so it took about 800 milliliters of water, and I just placed it all over in this uh, measuring cup here. And um, everything's been dissolved except for, of course, the anti-caking agent. So um, now I've just taken a coffee filter, as you can uh, see right there, and put it in this canning jar. Uh, you need a big container if you're dealing with this much liquid, but of course if you're using uh, processing less of this, you won't need such a big container. But now all we need to do is filter all of this liquid through to get rid of um, all of the anti-caking agent. Now um, you can of course change out the uh, filter every now and then because this is a lot of uh, solution that we're dealing with, so it's going to be a lot of anti-caking agent, and it will clog up the filter pretty quickly. So I'll be changing out the filter every now and then, and it's probably a good idea to let the solution stand for about 10 minutes just before filtering to help all the anti-caking agent go to the bottom, so we clog up the filter as, uh, l l l uh, as little as possible, I guess. Um, anyhow, so in the meantime, we're going to need to prepare about 395 or so grams of sodium bicarbonate, um, which is the baking soda. So we'll go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you back as soon as everything's been filtered and prepared. 
Okay, so after filtering, you can see we're left with a whole lot of anti-caking agent there. So we don't need any of that. Um, we don't need that anymore. So we can just put it off to the side. You can see with we're left with our solution. Now I did use 800 milliliters of water to dissolve all of that, and you can see it's quite clear. And then here I just have our sodium bicarbonate, which is the um, baking soda. So um, as mentioned before, here is the reaction which will be happening as we produce our um, ammonium bi bicarbonate and sodium nitrate. So, upon the addition of this, that's what we're going to produce. So we'll just start adding this in slowly but surely, and use lots of stirring to make sure everything um, works very well. And you can see a fair amount of fizzing does occur. Anyhow, so I'm actually going to take this outside. Uh, I'm not totally sure what gas is being produced. Give me a moment. Okay, it shouldn't have produced uh, ammonia gas, and it didn't. It was just carbon dioxide. I uh, washed it toward my nose, and it definitely did not smell like ammonia. Um, because... I, what, what we are forming is, of course, um, ammonium uh, bicarbonate, and upon heating, that will decompose into ammonia gas, carbon dioxide, and water. Um, but thankfully, we're not generating ammonia gas, so it is okay to add it inside, as long as our solution does not go above 42 degrees Celsius. So, um, just as a precautionary measure, I do think that I will take this outside, just in case we uh, somehow have an exothermic reaction and heat up our solution and produce ammonia. Because you can see, there was a fair amount of fizzing when we added that. Anyhow, so we'll go outside and we'll add the rest of this. Okay, I was very worried I was producing large amounts of ammonia gas, but thankfully I wasn't. So we'll just go ahead and add the rest of this. Not too quickly as we don't want to have a huge amount of foaming and have it overflow. Because as you can see, it's very, very, very reactive and clearly produces a lot of carbon dioxide. But I'm not totally sure why, but um... I just kind of assumed it wouldn't produce any carbon dioxide, but I guess it does. Anyhow, I'll finish adding all of that until we've added all of it. Now, don't expect it all to dissolve. That's totally fine, because the reaction will still take place as we've used a fairly stoichiometric ratio, so everything should be reacted, hopefully. Okay, so to make sure as much reacts as possible, we need to vigorously stir this until uh, we've uh, mixed it for quite a while. At which point, we can um, stick it on a hot plate and... Um, Canning jars like this are made of Pyrex glass, so they will not crack, um, uh, they're hard to crack um, when you heat them up rapidly, because we're going to have to boil the solution. This will decompose the um, ammonia bicarbonate that's formed into water, carbon dioxide, and toxic ammonia gas. So this must be done outside, do not do this inside, because ammonia bicarbonate will decompose um, when heated above 42 degrees Celsius. However, thankfully, um, sodium nitrate is very thermodynamically stable and will not decompose at all. So this is an excellent way to get rid of all of our ammonium uh, bicarbonate byproduct, which we do not want. So, I'll go ahead, mix all of this together, and um, make sure everything reacts. Now, it's important not to boil this solution to dryness, just boil it down a fair amount, but make sure there's still liquid, because um, sodium, um, uh, sorry, sodium nitrate is actually, um, despite it being fairly stable, it will decompose um, at temperatures of around 200, 300 degrees Celsius, uh, somewhere in between there. So we do not want to reach that, so if we boil the complete dot dryness, we can actually start decomposing that, which is not what we want. So we'll just boil it till we have a bit of uh, liquid left, then we can evaporate it to obtain our pure crystals. Anyhow, so we'll go ahead and continue mixing this, then stick it on the hot plate. Okay, so what I did is, after the uh, reaction, I simply put it on a uh, hot plate to boil down and decompose all the ammonium bicarbonate to ammonia gas, uh, carbon dioxide, and water, and um, left the sodium nitrate in the solution. And we boiled it down to about uh, probably 500, 400 milliliters or so. At this point, it's important not to boil to complete dryness um, at such elevated temperatures as you could start decomposing your um, sodium nitrate into nitrogen dioxide gas and sodium oxide. Now, what I did instead was, um, because there were still significant quantities of ammonia dissolved into solution, I couldn't just let it evaporate in the house because that would be releasing toxic ammonia gas. And I couldn't let it evaporate outside because it's too cold outside right now for very much evaporation to occur. So instead, what I did is I took a baking tray that's used just for chemistry that I uh, keep just for chemistry uh, alone and dumped the uh, about 400 milliliters into that. Then I set it on really low on my hot plate outside just to um, steam off all of the liquid. And this left us with a fairly nice white um, um, product. But um, you see, sodium nitrate is very uh, hygroscopic, which means it absorbs um, water out of the air. So, I didn't like um, how it was uh, 
probably still containing significant amounts of water. So what I did was I put it um, from the baking tray, crushed it up a bit, and put it in the oven at 170 degrees Celsius for an hour. Now, even at temperatures as low as that, I guess some of the um, sodium nitrates started decomposing because um, very rapidly um, over the course of an hour, we got like these, the, it, it took on a brownish color. I mean, it's not super pure, of course, but um, I'll explain that in a moment. Now, this is because small amounts of nitrogen dioxide gas were produced and have tainted um, this uh, brown because nitrogen dioxide is brown gas. So if you are gonna dry it in an oven, I would keep it below 100 degrees Celsius. Um, to dry it, or like maybe 120 degrees at the max, but not too hot, clearly, because it's very easy to, de to decompose. Anyhow, I don't really care too much about the purity as long as it is sodium nitrate, because I'm going to be using this to make nitric acid. Um, and I did weigh it out, and we got about 250 gra 215 grams of sodium nitrate from the 375 grams that we started with. And um, I went through all the numbers and everything, and this actually is only about a 56% yield, which isn't amazing by any means, but um, that's okay because it didn't cost a huge amount of money. Anyhow, so because this uh, is slightly contaminated, it's still okay to use in many applications, such as making nitric acid. But if you wanted to further purify this, you could, now that there's no ammonia gas here, you can redissolve it into solution, filter off um, any of the insoluble impurities, and um, let it recrystallize out again, um, but this time just through evaporation, and then you should be left with nice white crystals. But I don't need to do that. Um, anyhow, so yeah, that's basically how to make sodium nitrate. And uh, I guess we'll now go ahead and take a chunk of this, grind it up, mix it with an equal part of sugar, and we can test it out to see the reactivity. Okay, so I wanted to quickly mention that probably where most of our uh, product was left was in the amount, immense amount of filter papers that we used. You can see they're all in this jar here, and uh, there is a layer of liquid at the bottom. This is because it was taking quite a while to filter and I was getting kind of annoyed with it, so I stuck a bunch of it in there. So I believe there's still a reasonable amount of sodium nitrate in there, and I may try to recover it in uh, the future, but I won't show it in the video. Anyhow, so now we can go ahead and test the reactivity of it. And I've just mixed um, 6 grams with, uh, of our sodium nitrate with 6 grams of sugar and ground it up nice and fine. So, we'll just uh, take this and we have to pour it onto something, such as this right here. And uh, just pour it onto a piece of metal. Now, let's go ahead and light it with a blowtorch and see what sort of reaction happens. We should get a bright orange flame and some vigorous burning. Yep, and of course this isn't in perfect ratio, but um, it's definitely burning. And it seems to be ramping up a bit, and I'm getting some small flashes there. Yeah, that's definitely re very reactive. Very nice. That confirms the presence of sodium nitrate, and in a perfect reaction mixture, that would probably react very, very, very much more rapidly. Wow, you can see those bright, bright flashes of uh, the sodium metal there. Wow. That's pretty good. So uh, you can see just 12 grams is very reactive. So this is clearly sodium nitrate and it will have many applications in the future. You can see the nice smoke cloud that it made which is now drifting everywhere. And the last of it is just reacting. There we go. And we're left with some nice carbon compounds here. Anyhow, so I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll use that sodium nitrate in a future video for various different things. It's essentially just a derivative of potassium nitrate. Um, and it is cheaper to make sodium nitrate than potassium nitrate in terms of making it from household materials. Anyhow, so, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.